If you're tuning in, you're still watching Wave. World Athletics Day is celebrated on May 7th every year. It was introduced in 1996 by the International Amateur Athletic Federation as a social responsibility project, Athletic for a Better World. It's a day set aside to promote and spread awareness on the importance of being fit and healthy, especially amongst young children and youths. Uti, what do you think about this day? I think it was the day before that um, promoted in Taha Sport. I'm just saying. I didn't it, but. Um, I mean, we can all stand to be a lot fitter. We can all stand to move around a lot more. Athletics for me was never my thing, sadly. Um, <laughs> I'm not a runner, except for the run because you need to get away from something. <laughs> I'm not a runner. That, okay. The hand and feet coordination motion is not something it's I not, can it's do. Not, it's not just you. Mm. I'm not, I don't think I'm a runner. So yeah. I walk, I can walk, like I can walk for... That's you and I. I can walk in I marathon, walk, but, yeah, exactly, I can't, I but I don't run. run. Yeah. Tim, what about you? What do you think about the World Athletics Day? Oh, it's good. It, for me personally, it's just a reminder that I need to take this seriously. I mean, last time I was involved in <laughs> last, time, last time I did was back in school and, you know, just being so busy and hardly taking sports generally, you know, seriously. When, when you say so school, like, when, when you say school, school, is that secondary school or university? Secondary school. <laughs> We just need to know. Why, why are you trying to put her No, on I just need to know that because she, the way she just said school. Take it away. I just said school. She yeah. left no, school. we need to know. We need to know back. how far back you've gone. It is mean. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, let's um let's see what we, we found in the news today. Tell me, let's start with you. What did you find for us in the news? Okay, so the Supreme Court, which is the Apex Court in Nigeria, overturned the um, overturned marking this sack of Oyo County chairpersons. Mm. So after his inauguration, the governor of Oyo State in 2019, Mr. Shei Makin, they sacked the officials who were elected in 2018. And, you know, this case had gone on and on till it got to the Supreme Court. They had lost, I mean, the decisions were in favor, both at the High Court and at the Court of Appeal, were in favor of the um, local government chairman and um sorry but in favor of the governor as opposed to the local government chairman mm -hmm. you know but at the apex court at the supreme court the court ruled that the replacement of the sacked officials with caretaker committees was illegal and they fined mr mckinley's administration 20 million naira. wow so um let me just uh what stood out for me when i saw this news was you know the local government chairman and the councillors they are like there's the federal government, there's the state government, there's the local government, mm -hmm. and they were elected, you know, as well. So it's like the federal government sacking the state government. You know, it's like that's what happened when the state government sacked the local government officials. And then these people in turn went to court and the apex court has now ruled, you know, that you can't sack them because they were elected. They elected. weren't like selected people, they were elected by the people. And I think it's actually a good decision, not just for your state. Um, it's actually a good decision for like Nigeria and generally because state governments, you know, it's important that they recognize that they cannot, if they did not elect a person, mm -hmm. they did not elect the local government mm -hmm. officials, then they cannot sack the local government officials. So I think the Supreme, um, Supreme Court has actually, you know, this decision is a good one and is one that has set a precedent you know for other decisions and for other cases that will come up so i think it's a good one personally i have great respect for the oil state government um for the oil state governor particularly because of some of the things he had been mm -hmm. doing but you know seeing this the idea of sacking them was just one thing that um you know i, I didn't know why it happened but i'm glad that the supreme court has ruled on this i think you just answered the, the follow-up question i was going to give was that why why did he have to do that you know mm. you know and then again the, the, the question about power the issue yeah. about power do you know there's only one thing that stood out for me in this case like you said i wondered why but more importantly for me was the timeline they were elected in 2018 they were sacked in 2019 several cases have gone on in between yeah. But it's 2021. It's so 2021. two years later, we're, we're still talking about we're it. And, it's, it's, about and it. I'm sure, Tammy, I don't know if you can help us here. Mm. Would it affect their tenure? Would they count, you know, with these two they're, years they're, where they were waiting? They're retired now, okay, I so think. So what, yeah. the court ruled, 
what the court ruled is that, of course, their tenure has expired, but then they will be paid in arrears. Oh, that's what the for 20 million all is the for. Time. Yes. So for the time they ought to have served and they ought to have gotten compensation, they will be paid in arrears. And then the elections will go on normally again to have the new set of um, leaders. Okay. But they will that's be paid in arrears. Somebody's about to have a windfall. Yes. <laughs> Someone is about yeah. to have a windfall indeed. Okay, I'll just take my story next. My story comes from Vanguard. It says that CBN extends Naira for dollar scheme indefinitely. Now, if you were aware, sometime in March, the CBN had brought up this uh, Naira for dollar scheme where if you did receive um, foreign currency in, through the international uh, monetary um, agents, so like Western Union yeah. or through a commercial bank, you get five Naira for every one dollar that you receive. And I think this was to boost the effect of our COVID and then the drop in oil the prices rate. on yeah. our forex. Well, it was supposed to last from March to May 8th precisely, but it had been extended indefinitely. Now, what is this good news per se? I know, yes, we're trying to get as much, um, boost the, um, the foreign currency that we have, um, and by allowing it as much as it gets into the system as possible to be in the legal financial system. But then, Uti, is this systematic, good news? Systematic devaluation <laughs> by five naira. <laughs> of the dollar mm. on imaginative so i'm not by any means a financial expert i missed him it up with but <laughs> <laughs> yeah we do we do miss you know, it but ah. for me i say surely we can find more creative ways to um gain to earn foreign currency so the oil wagon is dying let's admit it so, so the, it's dying yeah, right it is we just need to be able to refine oil locally so that we can continue to drive our cars. But we've been continuously we unimaginative about how we're going to earn FX. And in truth, export is the way. It's just that our only exactly. export is oil. That's I was coming oil. to that. You know that we've really talked, we've really talked to, uh, we about, talk to you know, death about we have everything else. so many plans about diversification. I can't remember how far back we have been talking about diversification. We're trying to put things in place. And it's really, really not happening. Just as you've said, I think this is But all a these plans actually approach. can't even work in the face of all the insecurity challenges. Agriculture, let's not talk about what's happening let's with farmers. Let's not talk about what's I mean, happening. So it's it's really just, scary. this I think is the only issue. option they can come up with. Uti, let's quickly just take your story. So my story is short. There's not, there's not much to it. I picked it just because it's a follow-up from the conversation that we had on the show yesterday about um, insecurity and how it's impacting the um, education sector. Yeah. So we had said yesterday that we know that um, it, it's, it's like you don't need to, to predict, you don't need to be a soothsayer to know mm -hmm. it will happen again. And sadly, that it did happen again did yesterday happen again. Um, with gunmen abducting students from Abia State University. Uh, and they were abducted whilst in motion in, in a bus uh, some point between 7 p.m. and 8 p.m. last night. They were abducted from a minivan uh, from on a road from Okigwe to Uturu. There yet, uh, two students were able to escape whilst they were being so they were um, taken off the bus and taken into the into the forest. And two students were able to escape. So I believe there are seven students who are now missing, or seven persons who are missing. missing the missing university would like to is doing a thorough check to confirm whether these seven persons are indeed all students of the university. It's looking like it's becoming a trend, a scary trend. It's, it it's, it's not even become. It's now a trend. trend. It's now the norm. So any business that is profitable will boom. Um, and like Jennifer pointed out yesterday, parents will do anything for their children. So if I can pick you up, if I know that definitely somebody's Please going just to pick stop. You. My heart is racing. I know. But well, sad. The sad, sad truth. The not even sad. It's gone beyond sad. Now it's a scary, awful truth. First, very scary. Yeah. We we just have to break, and we would come back after the break. I when we we'll come back, we'll be as bright as our colors. So see you after the break. <laughs>